Today we are looking at old toys and we're thinking about what we can turn them into. Hi, I'm John and welcome to this channel where we are serious about play and games and the creativity behind play and games. And today we are looking at creativity of toy collecting. I previously promised you to show you my second hand finds and today I'm delivering on that promise. Every now and then I go to second hand stores to pick up uh, toys and see what I can find. And these are the finds from the last month. I'm not buying that much so, so it's just going to be a few things. I'm a bit different from a lot of other collectors in that I'm not actually looking for one type of thing. But rather I look at things that I can turn into something else. So the main reason for these are that they are nice things but they are nice things that I can change. At least some of them. You know this guy? His name is Extendar. Uh, he's from the original Masters of the Universe. And this one is just one of those characters that I really like. It's this pearl white color and it's got the most stupid uh, action feature ever. He can extend his legs and his arms and his neck and his torso. So his superpower is tall. I just like this character and I, when it was there I couldn't resist and I picked it up. Have you noticed this? The peace sign in the back of his neck. There's a lot of those small details which are really nice. Anyway, here's a side note. This time I ended up with a lot of Skylander characters. Uh, I usually find this very cheap. It's like nobody plays the game anymore. If you're not aware of it, Skylander is one of those games, video games, where you put the plastic characters onto a device and then it reads the plastic character and that turns up into the game. But you can find them in piles in the secondhand stores, so it looks like it's not that many people playing the game. There's still some kind of nice pictures. No articulation at all though. I think this is called Jill Grunt or something like that. Uh, and I just find it nice. Being a person that likes Call of Cthulhu and uh, Lovecraft, uh, a small fish figure is hard to resist. But my plan is not to keep it as this. I'm gonna build some more details into it uh, and repaint it and of course change the base and then it could become a really nice mutant for games of Necromunda Underhive. This is not high priority so it's probably gonna lie around for quite some time before this happens. At some point you're probably going to see it again as I do that. Then we have these two. This is Ninini. Some kind of ninja character. I'm actually not that read up on the Skylanders universe. Um, I really don't buy them for that. This one is even broken so it's missing an arm. I'm actually going to cut the other arm off as well. I think it's a nice character. But the main reason I bought it is because the... the body size and, and the shadowy thing going on in the bottom here. If I put a cloak over the head, I think this could turn into a really nice Shadow Weaver. Shadow Weaver is uh, one of the characters from Masters of the Universe. And not He-Man, mainly from She-Ra. She is the magician and second in command for Hordak, the evil person in that series. And there is this interesting story where She-Ra, the main character, got uh, kidnapped as a child and then she grew up with together with Hordak, the, the evil person. So in the beginning of the series, she's actually working for him, and then she turns around and becomes this character that fights for the good. Uh, and of course, in the early series, uh, they were made for kids and young kids. It was not that complicated. But in later versions of it, and in, in the new comic books, uh, which are a bit more grown up, they really take this into account, and they problematize her background. Part of that background is that Shadow Weaver is the right hand of Hordak, and she acted as the mother of She-Ra. So she's an interesting character which I would like to explore more. And one of the ways I plan to explore it is by turning this character into Shadow Weaver. That's also a project you're probably going to see in the future. Here's a dark bouncer. I have no idea what it actually is in the game. But I love the model. This big chunky body and especially like this head. And as with many of the other stuff, 
I didn't buy him for him. Uh, I'm more interested in how the model looks and what I can turn it into. In this case, I think the head has a lot of similarities to Sordak from Masters of the Universe. And as you can tell, Masters of the Universe is the main franchise that I'm interested in. I actually have that figure, but not... This one I didn't find there, uh, but I'm bringing it in just to compare it. As you can see, there's a big likeness between this head and this head. And in the world of Masters of the Universe, Sordak is described as this intergalactic peacekeeper. It's not explained that much further, but as many other things in, in later versions, it's been explored more. And lately it's been it's described as him being part of some kind of in, intergalactic peace core, where a lot of people are part. And in most versions, all of them have this humanoid body looking like humans with its ugly helmet. But I'm thinking of it more like the DC Universe uh, Green Lantern Corps. So the organization that Green Lantern is part of. Where beings from all over the universe are part. And that should mean that some of them are not humanoid. Or maybe most of them are not. And since there is such a big likeness between these two. My plan is to repaint this one. In these colors. Reds, greys and maybe a bit of flesh tones and turn him into some kind of robotic Sodak peacekeeper. And finally, I found some Ninja Turtles. This is the 2012 Nickelodeon set uh, Donatello. And unlike most of the others, this one I bought because it's a really nice model. It's got good articulation in arms, wrists, uh, elbows, the head swivels, legs, nothing in the feet though. So this one I'm mainly going to use as it is, I think. He didn't have any weapons, uh, so my plan is to make a bow staff for him, and probably out of wood, so he gets something that's real wood. And then, my view of the Neo Turtles is it should be in a dark and gritty series, so I will probably repaint this one a bit, mostly by adding shadows and making him a bit more like the original comics rather than the young children cartoons that's been around. I'm wondering a bit about if they have switched the place of these two. So the bicep seems to be turned around, but I have to check that. I really love the scratch details and, and the same thing is a bit on the shell as well. And this angry looking Donatello. This one I need your help with. I know it's Casey Jones, also from the Nina Turtles, but I can't figure out which version. So which year was it produced and which series is it part of? If you know, please tell me in the comments below, because I'm really wondering about this one. Casey Jones is an interesting character. Uh, he's this vigilante figure that's been part of Ninja Turtles almost from the beginning. And it's really the extreme version of what the vigilante is uh, in this uh, usually quite ugly clothes and uh, carrying uh, a hockey stick or a golf stick or something like that. Uh, a cricket basket. And... Uh, that's how he fights his foes. Have you seen he's actually got hair in his armpit? I think that might be more or less the only model I ever seen that has that. Anyway, the final things. Lego. Unopened boxes. Robochamp is one of the Lego board games and in a way I really love these games. But they are pretty bad. <laughs> Most of them are really bad. But I love the idea of, of using Lego to build board games. Because it gives you a chance to rebuild them into your own thing of course. So the games in themselves are not good. But once you open them and play them, then of course you can remake them into whatever you want. You can tweak the game or you can even change it completely. So, so I love the idea of LEGO board games. I'm sad they are no longer around. But maybe they should have some people that really know how to make good board games involved in that project. Because Reinick Nitsa was there uh, and he did good things. But I think it's only his games that's actually worth playing. And finally, one of the Nexonites. This is Aaron, or Aaron, who will probably be called in English. This is just one of those things I couldn't resist. I love Legos, uh, and it's going to be really fun to make him. And, and the box is unopened, so of course I grabbed it. Uh, I'm probably making a video out of making this one as well, talking about why Lego is so awesome. This was just a short update on the latest things I bought, but hopefully it gives you some kind of idea of the things I like and why I like it. And I think that's an interesting conversation to have. So. Please talk about it in the comments below. If you like it as well, 
if you don't like it or if you like something else. Or if you think I'm completely wrong in remaking models into other things. And I should keep them and preserve them in the original state. Tell me. For now, uh, have fun, be creative and I see you around.